Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested after being indicted by a grand jury in New York. That's according to the New York Times, also according to TMZ. We were actually the first ones here. Just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago. What happens here is that the feds, the federal government started a case with him. Apparently the search warrant that had his houses in Miami and LA was pre-planned already. They knew they were going to do that. So they have a much bigger case. They're going to be talking to a lot of people about ce certain criminal acts that he might have committed and then go from there. And what about the videos? Well, they're going to sift through those videos. They're going to look at them and then see if there's any criminality on those videos and then they'll, they'll go from there. The house of cards might fall for Diddy right now. It's not looking that great. Uh, right now, I know that uh, his, he has higher powered attorneys, and right. uh, with all these allegations that are coming out against him and against other people, a lot of people are starting to be very nervous about what's going on. He was like, it's power, see? I can make a man, he said, if I can make a man suck my, I can make people do anything. Because uh, Pete Diddy be wanting the body, and you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. He looking around like, damn, like, a lot of guys kissing each other in here, man. You feel me? What y'all do is y'all business. So you, you been to a party and seen this? Oh, I've seen it firsthand, multiple times. I've seen Dwight Howard in a pink dress, bro. Sean Puffy Combs, AKA Diddy, spinning, spinning, spinning. I mean, this guy is a master, and the allegation is that Combs aided and abetted his son in this attack. You heard about him catching the school of on the little designer dude? Imagine you got two seven foot tall swole guys in dresses, corner you in a hotel in a bedroom, you finna be scared. I, I distinctly remember going to a Diddy party, all the waitresses toppling. Diddy done turned over tapes, allegedly with the Carters in some freak out and the Beyonce. How on the cocaine? Everybody was passed out. Yo, Diddy had that man in the room. Look, yes, I put my ear to the fucking door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't know what the fuck was going on, but I just heard balls slapping against ass cheeks. I heard niggas struggling to take dick. I heard niggas being like, yeah, daddy, all that daddy this and daddy that. And then I heard some hollering and struggling like, yeah, I kept the phone there and I recorded all this. Embattled rapper and music mogul Sean Diddy Combs was taken into custody Monday night at a luxury New York City hotel as part of an ongoing federal investigation into alleged ST activities. Officials confirmed that Homeland Security Investigations, an agency that typically oversees cases involving T, led the arrest at the Park Hyatt, New York. Sources familiar with the case revealed that Combs voluntarily traveled to New York ahead of his arrest, fully aware of a looming grand jury indictment. While specific charges remained under wraps at the time, Combs is expected to appear in Manhattan federal court Tuesday morning, when the indictment will be unsealed, revealing the full scope of the accusations. In a brief statement, Damian Williams, U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York stated, Earlier this evening, federal agents arrested Sean Combs based on a sealed indictment filed by the SDNY. We expect to move to unseal the indictment in the morning and we'll have more to say at that time. This arrest marks another major blow for Combs, who has been facing growing scrutiny in recent years. In November, his former partner, R&B singer Cassie Ventura, accused him of a long history of domestic AB, filing a lawsuit that was quickly settled out of court. A resurfaced video from 2016 showing Combs v. A. Ventura in a hotel hallway has only added to the public backlash. Compounding his legal woes, Homeland Security agents also raided Combs' Beverly Hills mansion earlier this year, though details of that search remain unclear. It's believed that the raid, which took place in March, was connected to the same ST investigation that led to his recent arrest. Mark Agnifilo, Combs' attorney, expressed his client's disappointment in a public statement. We are deeply troubled by the decision to pursue what we believe is an unjust prosecution. Sean Combs is not only a music icon and self-made entrepreneur, but he has also devoted his life to family and philanthropy, especially within the black community. He has cooperated fully with investigators and relocated to New York voluntarily. Last week, we asked the public to withhold judgment until all the facts come to light. These are the actions of an innocent man. Beyond the legal case, 
there has been a surge in online chatter about Combs' alleged involvement in controversial gatherings with other prominent figures in the hip-hop industry. Social media has exploded with claims about disturbing audio and video recordings that reportedly feature Combs and other male rappers in compromising situations. Meek Mill, one of the most vocal rappers in the industry, was previously linked to these allegations but vehemently denied his involvement, even going as far as threatening legal action against those spreading the rumors. However, new developments have surfaced, with viral audio allegedly capturing Meek in a distressing encounter with Combs. In the recording, a voice said to be Meek's can be heard in a state of panic, claiming to have been forced into an intimate situation with Combs. Speculation has also arisen that Meek may have been drugged at one of Diddy's infamous parties, fueling the debate about whether he was a victim or a willing participant. While fans continue to dissect these rumors, many believe that Meek hinted at such situations in his past music referencing potential financial motivations for getting involved in questionable activities. Regardless, Meek Mill isn't the only rapper caught in this scandal. Several other high-profile names are reportedly linked to these freak-off sessions, with more videos and allegations surfacing daily, casting a wider net over the scandal. As federal authorities move forward with their case, the social media frenzy only intensifies. Speculation about which other celebrities may be entangled in these claims is running rampant, with fans and critics alike waiting to see what the next chapter holds in this high-profile investigation. The drama surrounding Sean Diddy Combs continues to escalate, with fans anxiously waiting for more details to emerge. The story is becoming more tangled by the day, and new developments keep surfacing, keeping social media buzzing with speculation. As this investigation unfolds, it's clear we haven't heard the last of these shocking allegations. To bring you up to speed, back in February, producer Lil Rod filed a bombshell lawsuit not only targeting Diddy, but also roping in other major names in the hip-hop scene, including Meek Mill. According to the suit, Diddy allegedly bragged about sleeping with Meek Mill. When this story broke online, Meek immediately went on the defensive, firing off a series of tweets in an attempt to clear his name. Meek wrote, Every black blog site enhanced that post to make me seem gay. I changed laws for our people. I donate millions. They are designed to destroy the image of black leaders. It can't work with me, so you gotta really kill me. And I still will get bigger after this. God, not me. LOL. Despite this fiery response, many noticed that Meek never actually denied the accusations outright. Interestingly, Meek questioned the authenticity of the lawsuit, suggesting it might be fake. He tweeted, Let's find the real lawsuit to make sure it's not computer generated. It's obvious I'm going indecent. Y'all gonna see a lot of bad press about me. I'm going against the system. They see it's wide open. We have a whole new system. His cryptic comments only added to the speculation, leaving fans wondering why he didn't simply say, I did not have relations with that man. Adding fuel to the fire, an old video resurfaced of Meek relaxing in a pool while Diddy, behind the camera, refers to him as Daddy in a playful yet uncomfortable tone. This clip, combined with the ongoing rumors, has left fans questioning the nature of their relationship. But things took an even darker turn when an audio recording surfaced, allegedly capturing Meek in a distressing situation with Diddy. The graphic audio, which has sparked a huge reaction online, reportedly features a man said to be Meek screaming in pain, while another man, allegedly Diddy, engages in inappropriate behavior. Although the audio is too explicit to be shared on mainstream platforms, snippets of it have circulated, leaving fans stunned. Many are grappling with the disturbing nature of these accusations, and the controversy surrounding Diddy continues to deepen. With each new revelation, it becomes harder to untangle fact from fiction. The origins of the leaked audio remain unclear, with some social media users claiming it was released by a former bodyguard of Diddy. One popular account on X suggested that Meek's drink was spiked at one of Diddy's notorious parties before the incident took place. However, others argue that the audio is fake, suggesting that the voices belong to imposters attempting to stir up drama. Regardless, Meek's inclusion in Lil Rod's lawsuit, combined with his somewhat defensive reactions, has only fueled speculation. 
to complicate matters further, there are rumors that Meek was recently caught following an X page featuring intimate videos of black men. Additionally, an old track has resurfaced, in which Meek seems to ask for forgiveness, with some fans speculating that the lyrics could be linked to his rumored encounters with Diddy. However, it's not just Meek Mill who's caught up in this mess. Other rappers have also been linked to Diddy's alleged freak-off parties. One name making the rounds is Birdman. A video clip of Birdman and Diddy has gone viral, initially appearing innocent enough, with the two chatting casually. But fans were quick to point out that things took a strange turn when Diddy began clinging to Birdman and affectionately patting his head, behavior that left many viewers uncomfortable. As the controversy continues to build, fans and followers are left to speculate about the true extent of Diddy's involvement in these disturbing allegations. With the federal investigation still underway and more details surfacing each day, it's clear this story is far from over. Stay tuned as more revelations come to light and we uncover what's really happening behind the scenes in this tangled web of rumors and accusations. Now, let's dive into Usher's involvement in this tangled mess. Many speculate that Usher may have started out as an unsuspecting victim before potentially becoming a willing participant in Diddy's infamous antics. There's that notorious clip where Diddy casually mentions that he and Usher used to wrestle when Usher was just 10 years old. Given that Diddy is about a decade older, the thought alone raises eyebrows and has sparked serious concerns. The controversy doesn't end there. Usher has also admitted that he was sent to Diddy's so-called flavor camp when he was around 13 or 14 years old. It's hard not to wonder about what he might have seen or experienced during that time. The nature of these camps has always been a topic of speculation, and Usher's revelation only fuels that fire, leading many to question what really went on behind closed doors. But Usher's not the only big name caught up in this storm. Next up is The Game, who has a different story altogether. According to sources, Diddy didn't need to twist the game's arm to bring him into his circle. The game has openly talked about how Diddy approached him years ago with the promise of collaborating on an album. However, instead of heading straight to the studio, they spent the next two years living the high life, flying around on Diddy's private jet and enjoying the perks of wealth and fame. The game mentioned that Diddy showered him with expensive gifts and treated him to an extravagant lifestyle. What's even more curious is that the game recently confirmed in an interview that during those two years, no music was ever made. He revealed that all they did was party, especially in hotspots like Atlanta. His admission left many fans scratching their heads. What was really going on between Diddy and the game during those years? Adding more layers to the story, there are claims that before the game rose to fame in the music industry, he had a very different career path. Back in 2006, during the height of their feud, 50 Cent released the mixtape, G-Unit Radio, Part 21, Hate It or Love It. The cover included a picture of the game in what appeared to be a male exotic dancer's outfit, implying that this was part of his past. In 2013, the game's own stepfather, Hodari Sababu, added fuel to the rumors when he claimed that the game's mother and he used to run a male exotic club. Hodari even alleged that the game, known offstage as Jason, took to the stage a few times as a dancer himself. These revelations stirred even more controversy and raised questions about the game's early life and how it ties into his connection with Diddy. What's puzzling, though, is why the game stuck around with Diddy for two whole years without making any music. Music. Why would he let Diddy lavish him with gifts and take him on lavish trips without addressing the fact that they weren't working on the album they had originally discussed? And what was Diddy's true motivation behind keeping the game close during this time? These details only add to the increasingly complex and scandalous narrative surrounding Diddy and his relationships with various rappers. It seems like there are still many unanswered questions and dark corners yet to be fully explored. Fans and critics alike are keeping a close watch on how these revelations unfold, eager to see what new information will come to light next. Now, let's talk about Ray J. The rumors swirling around him and Diddy are nothing short of wild, but perhaps the craziest one involves Ray J allegedly trying to set up rapper Fabulous for something shady with Diddy. For those who don't remember, Ray J and Fabulous had beef years ago, and it all started after HBO aired a clip of Ray J singing at a party hosted by none other than Floyd Mayweather. 
together. In that clip, Ray J threw Diddy's name into the mix, hinting that Diddy was encouraging him to confront Fabulous. But the situation took a dark turn when Ray J went on to threaten that one of his men, who he claimed likes men, would target Fabulous. The threat, made in the presence of Charlemagne and DJ Envy, left many shocked, and it added fuel to the already simmering tension between Ray J and Fab. Recently, that infamous clip of Ray J's threat resurfaced, sparking fresh speculation. Fans have begun connecting the dots, suggesting that Ray J might have been implying something sinister, possibly involving Diddy. The connection deepens when you look back at Diddy's notorious Drink Champs interview with Fabulous, where Diddy repeatedly pressed Fab to admit if he missed him. The whole exchange felt uncomfortable, with Fabulous looking genuinely uneasy, clearly trying to keep his cool, but showing visible signs of fear. At one point, Fab seemed almost desperate to avoid another round of Diddy's parties, practically pleading to stay out of the limelight again. It doesn't end there. While we're talking about Diddy's birthday stunts, there's also the video where Diddy sings a rather bizarre rendition of Happy Birthday to French Montana. In the clip, French is seated at Diddy's table, shirtless and looking incredibly shiny, making the whole scene feel even more uncomfortable for those watching. These odd moments have only added to the growing discomfort fans feel about Diddy's behavior in his interactions with celebrities. Speaking of controversial interactions, let's not forget about Rick Ross. That's right, Rosé, the boss himself has been dragged into these rumors. Now, while no one's out here trying to imagine Ross and Diddy involved in anything too explicit, the streets are whispering that Ross may have participated in some of the questionable activities that reportedly went down at Diddy's after parties. There's even a video floating around of Diddy and Ross washing cars together, where they're seen joking around about slippery soap a moment that only fueled speculation about their friendship. And if that wasn't enough, a certain photo made the rounds on social media, where it appeared as though Diddy and Ross were about to kiss, further adding to the intrigue surrounding their relationship. These stories, along with the endless rumors about Diddy, Ray J, Fabulous, French Montana, and Rick Ross, are painting an increasingly troubling picture of Diddy's interactions with these high-profile celebrities. As more and more unsettling details emerge, fans and critics alike are left questioning what's really going on behind the scenes. With each new revelation, the drama only gets deeper, and it seems there's no end in sight to the speculation and concern swirling around these relationships. Now, jokes aside, let's wrap up this wild ride with another name you probably didn't expect. YK Osiris, the young rapper who struggled with mental health issues and even disappeared from the public eye for a while. Lately, there's been some serious chatter about YK in the rumor mill, with folks suggesting he's gone through real trauma in the music industry. Brace yourselves, because these rumors get even wilder. Allegedly, YK was being passed around between Diddy and, believe it or not, Drake. Word on the street is that Diddy had YK on his payroll as some sort of personal plaything, even taking him on a romantic getaway to Jamaica. Fast forward to YK's appearance on The Breakfast Club, where Charlemagne and DJ Envy couldn't resist asking him about the Diddy rumors. YK awkwardly laughed it off, claiming he was in Jamaica with a girl and that people were just making stuff up. During that same interview, YK also opened up about his connection with Drake. He addressed a viral video where Drake supposedly made him sing at his house to settle a gambling debt. A lot of fans saw that moment as a straight-up humiliation ritual, but YK was quick to downplay it. He insisted that Drake wasn't trying to embarrass him and that there was no bad blood between them. However, there's another video that's raising eyebrows, and it's even more unsettling. In this clip, YK is seen doing sit-ups on Drake's private jet, while Drake's artist Baka taunts him in the background. Some people brushed it off as just friends joking around, but others couldn't shake the feeling that YK looked genuinely uncomfortable, almost as if he was being forced into the situation. The video has sparked a lot of concern, with fans questioning what's really happening behind the scenes. While it's easy to joke about the wild rumors surrounding Diddy, YK, Osiris, and other celebs, there's a darker side to these stories that can't be ignored. The glitz and glamour of the music industry often hide the harsh realities of power dynamics, manipulation, and exploitation. 
and as more details come to light, fans and critics alike are left questioning the true nature of these relationships. Let's not forget that Diddy is now facing extremely serious allegations, and with Homeland Security involved, things are bound to escalate. The fact that multiple rappers who've been close to Diddy for years are now being brought into the conversation only adds fuel to the fire. Fans seem divided, some think these rumors are nothing more than gossip, while others believe there's more to the story than meets the eye. As this investigation unfolds, one thing's for sure, the entertainment world is watching closely. What comes next could change everything for Diddy and the industry as a whole. Some fans believe that artists like Usher and YK Osiris were taken advantage of as young talents, failing to receive the protection they deserved from the adults around them. This perspective argues that these artists were vulnerable and fell prey to manipulation and exploitation by those in power people who should have been safeguarding their well-being, not taking advantage of it. On the flip side, some fans argue that many of these rap Rappers were old enough to understand the situation and may have willingly participated in Diddy's behavior for the perks and opportunities it offered. This side claims that these artists, knowing full well what was happening, chose to be complicit, seeing it as the price for staying in the spotlight or advancing their careers. As the investigation continues to unfold, it's becoming clear that the music industry is now under a microscope. The revelations surrounding Diddy and the alleged involvement of other prominent artists shine a spotlight on troubling issues within the industry issues of exploitation, power dynamics, and the responsibilities of those in positions of influence. Fans and critics alike are watching closely to see who will be held accountable and whether any real changes will come from these disturbing allegations. Ultimately, these conversations are forcing a reckoning about the music industry's darker side. The question now is, will this lead to a deeper examination of how young talent is treated? Or will the industry continue to look the other way? Only time will tell. Y'all just seen it. Y'all just seen it. You know, Diddy, he is having to come to terms with all of the atrocities, with everything he's done to these people, you know, to these people in the flavor camp, to, to um... To all of these people, you know, he's having to come to terms with this stuff and he's going to have to pay for this stuff. Um, everything's coming to the light. This is the reckoning. <laughs> okay, like th this is the end, bro. The final gambit, you know, I never thought it would get to this point where um, where Diddy's actually being arrested. But we're here. We are here, you know, and what we can say is that we have done a good job of spreading this information, spreading this out and putting this out there. You know what I mean? Because for a long time, this stuff was not being looked into, you know, before the Jaguar rights, before, um, before, you know, these types of people started talking about this type of stuff. It wasn't really being, um, obviously there was always rumors, but people weren't really looking into it. Like, Oh, we really got to look into this. You know, once Jag started talking about it, all of the, Conspiracy channels, me, everyone else, you know, um, Usher started talking about his experiences with Diddy, Justin Bieber spoke on it, you know, once all these people came out, it was like, okay, Cassie, she came out, spoke on her experiences, you know, once everyone came out, then people started looking at it, you know, once, once there really started being that real coverage on it, you know, people started saying, okay, let's look a little bit deeper into this, and I think, you know, law enforcement caught wind of that, you know what I mean, they caught wind of that stuff, and started investigating Diddy, straight up. You know what I mean. And um, they they were they were suspicious, and they have found something because they're locking them up now. So clearly, they have enough evidence to say that we're gonna put you, we're gonna lock you up now. We know that you're guilty of something, and now it's just to find out to what extent are you guilty of all of these things. You know, I think that's the point that they're at at this point, and it seems like they were already at that point months ago when they first did the raid, you know, even before then, because the raid was planned. So it's really the cops have been on this for a little for a little while now, you know, but only just now are we seeing the ramifications of everything. You know, the dominoes are finally falling, you know, the Jenga blocks are falling. The Jenga tower is coming down. <laughs> you understand the Jenga tower is crumbling. That boy, the, the, the pedestal that Diddy was standing on is, is about to vanish from beneath his feet and <laughs> he's gonna go and he's just gonna fall into a cell you know that pedestal vanished disappeared he fell down into the hole of a cell now he now he's gonna be trapped 
You know, I mean, I think he'll be able to, he, he should be able to do some type of finesse with the type of money he's got. But if they got hard evidence on him, he, you're not going to, what can you say? You know what I mean? What can you say when they have a video footage of certain things that you've done? You know, um, it's rumored that he has tapes of a lot of the stuff that was going on um, at those parties. And if he does and they get, and they've uh, gotten access to some of that footage or gotten access to that, then he's in trouble and there's not going to be anything he can really do to reverse what he's done, you know, because if it be, if it comes down to a thing where a jury is looking at it, they're not going to be judging him off of the amount of money he has. You know what I mean? They're just going to judge him off of, OK, does this look like he was guilty or not? You know, and so if it gets to that point, he's going to be in trouble because the discourse, the the. The general consensus is that Diddy is guilty of these things. You know, I'm not saying that he is. I, I would, I would, I fall in line with that. I agree with that type of thought. But the general sent, the general consensus is that he is guilty of these things. You know what I mean? And you know, he does appear to be incredibly guilty. You know, he does. He doesn't do any. He doesn't do himself any favors with the stuff that he's done with other people and um, just the word that's out there on his name. He's got a really bad rep. You know, so. It's all out there. Everything's out there. Everything's being exposed. And this is it, bro. This is it. You know, we worked hard to get to this moment. Clap it up. Clap it up because we worked hard. All the people who've been supporting these videos, all the people who've been commenting, sharing, subscribing, turning on the notifications, all the people who watch Jaguar Right, support her, all those people, everyone who listened, we've all, we got, we did it. We did it, you know, we did it. And um, Diddy's going to have to pay. He's not going to get away with this stuff, bro. You know, he thought, you know, since he got, since Keefe D ended up having to take the, the downfall for his, for the stuff, for the hit that he's put on Tupac, you know what I mean? Since Keefe D ended up having to take that charge and he got off scot-free, you know, I think Diddy was getting kind of cocky, you know, after that whole Keefe D thing, when Keefe D got caught up, I think Diddy was like... <laughs> You old fool, you got caught up, man. I can never get caught in this type of stuff, bro. That's why <laughs> he's probably like, that's why I played it so smooth, you idiot. Key VD, you fool. And Diddy is probably getting cocky, bro. He was getting happy. He's like, yeah, I got away with what happened to Pop. I'm untouchable. They'll never catch me. You know what I mean? And this is how he was thinking. And that's clearly how he was moving. And um, that's just not the case, you know? He's not invincible and he's not untouchable. And he can be caught and brought to justice. And it looks like that <laughs> it looks like that is the process that is currently in motion. You understand? So yeah, man, this is the precipice. This is it. You know? This is what we've all been waiting for. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I know a lot of y'all didn't think this was ever gonna happen, that this wasn't even a reality, wasn't even realistically possible. But once you saw the raid, your eyes had to be opened, you know, that well, if they're raiding them, they're they're coming down on that boy. <laughs> they they're coming down on that boy, bro. They know that there's something there. If they're raiding you, they think you're suspicious as well. You know, basically they agree with everyone else. You know, so um, it doesn't look too good for Diddy. This is a very very ugly situation for him. This is the worst thing that could ever happen to him. This is his worst nightmare. Okay, other than him actually perishing from existence. You understand, and just not existing anymore. That is obviously the worst thing that could happen to him. But other than that, while he's living on this earth to suffer and to be brought to justice for the, for all and for all of his um atrocities, for all the things he's committed to to face consequences for his actions, that is going to be his worst nightmare. This is the worst thing that that, that Diddy could have ever dreamed of, you know. So, um, yeah, man, it, it, it it's going to be a this is going to be a bad John for him. This <laughs> this is going to be a bad John for him, bro. <laughs> for real bro like and now people are starting to question like are his sons involved are his sons going to be brought to justice for this type of stuff like are his that is there anything you know what i mean so it could get really ugly bro it could get really really ugly and um i don't see this panning out really well for diddy at all i think this is going to be the nail in the coffin you know if if um for lack of better words, you know, I would say that this is going to be the nail in the coffin for Diddy. This is the end. This is it. You can't come back from this type of thing. You know what I mean? Once you've been raided and the feds are on you, the feds don't get off of you. You know what I mean? They got that 
percentage conviction rate, my boy. <laughs> like, so you're not, you're not, you're not escaping that, my boy. That's a bad John, bro. You're not, you're done. So we can say goodbye to Diddy. So long. See you, sucker. <laughs> like, you're, you're, you're screwed, my boy. You're done. You know, and uh, this is what happens. You know, some people get too cocky. This is kind of like how things were going with um with another guy with Jeffrey. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. This is how this is kind of how things were going with um with old buddy Jeff. You know, Island Boy Jeff Jeffy. Okay, Island Boy Jeffrey. All right, it, it's kind of like that. You know, I feel like there's a lot of similarities between this and that. And it's just going to be really, really, really interesting to see how this stuff pans out. You know, it really is. And I will be here to cover it. You know, we will be here to break it down. We, we surely will be because, yeah, this is going to be one of the biggest crackdowns in all of history. You know, what I mean? literally, literally, bro. In all of music history, this is going to be one of the biggest crackdowns. Cracking down on that boy. You know, but yeah, y'all. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do y'all think about it? What do you guys think about um, Diddy's arrest and everything that's happening? You know, what do you guys think about this stuff? Do you guys think that he's going to be brought to justice? Or do you guys think he'll be able to slither and slime his way out of this with that billion dollar net worth that he's got? Uh, what, do you, what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, like the video. Turn on notifications. If you support this content, you support this message, you know, turn on notifications because um, it, you know, without the support, the algorithm won't know that this is content that people must see. People must be enlightened by this type of messaging. But the algorithm can't decipher how important this messaging is. The only way the algorithm can understand how important this messaging is, is if you like, if you comment, or if you turn on notifications. You know what I mean? Only if you do these positive things, you know, even if you do one of those positive things, you know, the, the, that tells the algorithm that, yes, this is important. This is something that people need to know. People need to see this. People need to wake up. You understand? That's what the algorithm hears when you when you comment, when you like, when you do these things. But, you know, when the support isn't there, the algorithm says, well, wait a minute. This content isn't important. People don't care about this. People aren't engaging with this. So we're going to suppress this. We're going to suppress this message that the, that the youth need to hear because the people who are viewing it aren't, aren't, aren't interacting enough. So that, that can be a big thing. So, um... Yeah, you guys, just show love if you can, you know? But yeah, y'all, snow is right here. Be easy, y'all.